Chapter 2 Missionary Adaptation Few people seem to be aware that the Roman Catholic Church in America is officially recognized as a state. How this came about makes interesting reading. Early in his administration, President Ronald Reagan invited the Vatican City, whose ruling head is the Pope, to open its first embassy in Washington, D.C. His Holiness responded positively, and the embassy, or apostolic nunciature, of the Holy See opened officially on January 10, 1984. Shortly thereafter, a complaint was filed against President Reagan at U.S. District Court in Philadelphia by the American Jewish Congress, the Baptist Joint Committee on Public Affairs, Seventh-day Adventists, the National Council of Churches, the National Association of Evangelicals, and Americans United for Separation of Church and State. The plaintiffs sought to have the court declare that the administration had unconstitutionally granted the Roman Catholic faith privileges that were being denied to other establishments of religion. On May 7, 1985, the suit was thrown out by Chief Judge John Fulham. Judge Fulham ruled that the district courts do not have jurisdic- jurisdiction to intervene in foreign public in foreign policy decisions of the executive branch. Bishop James W. Malone, president of the U.S. Catholic Conference, praised Judge Fulham's decision, noting that it settled not a religious issue, but a public policy question. The plaintiffs appealed. The Third Circuit denied the appeal, noticing that the Roman Catholic Church Church's unique position of control over sovereign territory gives it advantages that other religious organizations do not enjoy. The Apostolic Nunciature at 3339 Massachusetts Avenue Northwest enables Pontifex Maximus to supervise more closely American civil government, public policy, as administered through Roman Catholic laypersons. One such layperson was Chief Judge Fulham, whose Roman Catholicism apparently escaped the attention of the plaintiffs. This same imperium ran pagan Rome in essentially the same way. The public servants were priests of the various gods and goddesses. Monetary affairs, for example, were governed by priests of the goddess Moneta. Priests of Dionysus managed architecture and cemeteries, while priests of Justitia, with her sword, and Libera, blindfolded, holding her scales aloft, ruled the courts. Hundreds of priestly orders known as the Sacred College managed hundreds of government bureaus, from the justice system to construction, cleaning, and repair of bridges. No bridge could be built without the approval of Pontifex Maximus. Buildings, temples, castles, baths, sewers, ports, highways, walls and ramparts of cities, and the boundaries of lands. Priests directed the paving and repairing of streets and roads, supervised the calendar and the education of youth. Priests regulated weights, measures, and the value of money. Priests solemnized and certified births, baptisms, puberty, purification, confession, adolescence, marriage, divorce, death, burial, excommunication, canonization, deification, adoption into families, adoption into tribes and orders of nobility. Priests ran the libraries, the museums, the consecrated lands and treasures. Priests registered the trademarks and symbols. Priests were in charge of public worship, directing the festivals, plays, entertainments, games, ceremonies. Priests wrote and held custody over wills, testaments, and legal conveyances. By the fourth century, one half of the lands of Rome I'm sorry, one half of the lands and one fourth of the population of the Roman Empire were owned by the priests. When the Emperor Constantine and his Senate formally adopted Christianity as the Empire's official religion, the exercise was more of a merger or acquisition than a revolution. The wealth of the priests merely became the immediate possession of Christian churches, and the priests merely declared themselves Christians government continued without interruption. 
the pagan gods and goddesses were artfully outfitted with the names appropriate to Christianity. The sign over the pantheon indicating to the fertility goddess Kybel and all other gods was rewritten to Mary and all the saints. The temple of Apollo became the church of Saint Apollinaris. The temple of Mars was reconstructed church of Santa Martina with the inscription Mars hence ejected Martina martyred maid claims now the worship which to him was paid. Haloed icons of Apollo were identified as Jesus and the crosses of Bacchus and Tammuz were accepted as the official symbol of the crucifixion. Pope Leo I decreed that St. Peter and St. Paul have replaced Romulus and Remus as Rome's protecting patrons. Pagan feasts, too, were Christianized. December 25th, the celebrated birthday of a number of gods, became among them Saturn, Jupiter, Tammuz, Bacchus, Osiris, and Mithras, was claimed to have been that of Jesus as well, and the traditional Saturnalia, season of drunken merriment and gift-giving, evolved into Christmas. Interesting that Pope Francis was born on Saturnalia. Mithras was Sol Invictus, the unconquerable sun, an imperial Roman god since the 3rd century BC under Constantine Christianity. Artisans reconstructed him, Jesus, and other biblical names. In the silver dish made on Cyprus in the 8th century AD, Mithras, note the peculiar stance, slaying the cosmic bull became David killing the lion. Bacchus was popular in ancient France under his Greek name Dionysus, or as the French rendered it, Denis. His feast, the Festern Dionysi, was held every seventh day of October, at the end of the vintage season. After two days of wild partying, another feast was held, the Festum Dionysi Eleutheri Rusticum, country festival of Mary Dionysus. The papacy cleverly brought the worship of Dionysus into the jurisdiction by transforming the words Dionysus, Bacchus, Eleutheria, and Rusticum into a group of Christian martyrs. October 7th was entered on the liturgical calendar as the feast day of St. Bacchus the Martyr, while October 9th was instituted as the festival of Saint Denis and of his companions, St. Eleuther and St. Rustic. The Catholic Almanac of 1992 sustains the fabrication by designating October 9th as Feast Day of Saint Denis, Bishop of Paris, and two companions identified by er early writers as Rusticus, a priest, and Eleutherius, a deacon martyred near Paris. Denis is popularly, re popularly regarded as the apostle and patron saint of France. And this is what I found for the feast day of October 7th, Bacchus the Martyr, was Serge and Bacchus, fourth century Roman Christian soldiers revered as martyrs and military saints. The oldest record of their martyrdom describes them as erasti, Greek for lovers, Scholars believe that they may have been united in the rite of Adelphopoesis, brother-making, a kind of early Christian same-sex marriage. Playing loose with truth and scripture in order to bring every human creature into subjugation to the Roman pontiff is a technique called missionary adaptation. This is explained as the adjustment of the mission subject to the cultural requirements of the mission object so that the papacy's needs will be brought 
as much as possible in accord with the existing socially shared patterns of thought, evaluation, and action so as to avoid unnecessary and serious disorganization. Rome had so seamlessly adapted its mission to American secularism that we do not think of the United States as a Catholic system, yet the rosters of government rather decisively show this to be the case. By far the greatest challenge to missionary adaptation has been Scripture, that is, the Old and New Testaments, commonly known as the Holy Bible. Almost for as long as Rome has been the seat of Pontifex, Pontifex Maximus, there has been a curious enmity between the popes and the Bible, whose believers they are presumed to head. In the next chapter, we shall begin our examination of that enmity.